organisms on Earth are connected, and there are different levels at which these connections can be studied. The field of study that looks at interactions between organisms and their environment is known as ecology, and there are several levels of organization that are of interest to an ecologist. Let's look at some of these levels of organization. A population is defined as an interbreeding group of individuals of the same species. A community consists of all the living organisms living in a particular area. An ecosystem includes all organisms living in one geographic region and all the environmental factors, such as temperature and water availability, that affect those organisms. The next level that is studied by ecologists is a biome, a large ecosystem defined by climatic, physical and biotic characteristics. It typically includes smaller ecosystems in a wide geographic region sharing similar characteristics, usually average rainfall, average temperature and major plant types. The final and largest level of organization is the biosphere. The biosphere includes all the biomes on Earth. All ecosystems share one planet and thus global climate plays a major role in determining the location and composition of each ecosystem. Likewise, global disturbances such as climate change, which is a long-term change in weather patterns, can impact every ecosystem. The distribution of organisms around the planet is mainly dependent upon biotic and abiotic factors. A biotic factor is a living thing that influences an ecosystem, such as food resources, predators and pathogens. An abiotic factor is a non-living thing, such as water, temperature and minerals, that affects an ecosystem. Biotic factors can influence the distribution of species in several ways. For example, either the presence of a large population of wolves or the absence of plentiful grasses may cause a population of rabbits to leave an area or die out. Competition can also play a role where a species is found. Competition exists when species fight each other directly or when they use the same resource. For example, if there are no wolves and plenty of grasses, but a large population of grasshoppers consumes the grasses before the rabbits can find them, the rabbit population may leave the area or die out. In addition to biotic factors, the global distribution of species is also dependent on abiotic or non-living factors. Water is among the most important abiotic factors because water is critical for life. For terrestrial organisms, drying out is a real threat to their survival. Different organisms have evolved different ways of dealing with this threat. For example, the waxy coating of leaves prevents excessive loss of water. Temperature is another factor that determines where life is found on Earth. Many organisms survive within a narrow body temperature range, limiting the locations where they can live. Some organisms are better adapted to cold temperatures, while others thrive at warm temperatures. As a result, more organisms are found in locations with moderate or stable temperatures than in locations with extreme or highly variable temperatures. Sunlight is another important abiotic factor affecting the geographic distribution of life. Photosynthetic organisms require access to sunlight, and these organisms are often the sources of energy for ecosystems. Subterranean caves and deep ocean environments contain organisms that use alternative energy sources, such as feeding on leftovers that sink from shallow depths. Pressure is yet another abiotic factor that can affect living things. In the deep ocean where pressure is high, only organisms specifically adapted to those conditions can thrive. Similarly, at high mountain altitudes, where air pressure is low and oxygen is scarce, specially adapted organisms are found. For example, llamas, in addition to having a large lung capacity, have more red blood cells per unit of blood than other mammals, which means oxygen is more easily transported around their bodies. Earth's biomes and ecosystems are diverse because climate varies geographically. Climate is the long-term, wide-range weather patterns that an area experiences, such as the amount of precipitation, the average temperature, and the average humidity. Climate patterns are the result of Earth's movement around the sun and Earth's daily rotation on its tilted axis. Areas around the equator experience direct sun exposure for most of the year. 
However, areas away from the equator experience seasonal variation in sun exposure, depending on which part of the Earth is tilting toward or away from the sun. In addition to predictable annual variation in sun exposure, there are major global patterns in air movement. Air rises at the equator and falls at 30 degrees latitude. Air rises again at 60 degrees and falls at the poles. This pattern exists in both hemispheres. These large wind patterns affect climate because they determine global patterns in rainfall. Near the equator, where air is rising, there is high rainfall and warm temperatures. At 30 degrees north and south, cool, dry air sinks and is reheated, resulting in some of the world's great deserts. At 60 degrees, air rises again and drops rainfall, forming the cool, temperate forests. At the poles, cold, dry air falls again, leading to low rainfall polar climates. In addition to rainfall patterns based on latitude, there's a local effect that occurs when wind blows toward a mountain range. As the air moves up the mountain range, it loses water, causing rain on the windward side. When the air reaches the peak of the range, the dry air begins to descend and warm, causing a desert on the leeward side of the mountain range. This effect, called a rain shadow, is responsible for the desert that covers much of central Nevada.